The American Cancer Society is out with a new report on cancer cases and deaths in the U.S. While more people are being diagnosed with cancer, fewer people are dying from it. Here to talk about the findings is Dr. Mika Klein, an oncologist with Texas Oncology. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So the American Cancer Society is projecting 2 million new cases of cancer in the U.S. this year. What is driving the increase in cases and which types of cancer are more prevalent? Uh, so we think that something driving the increase in cases uh, are lifestyle changes, environment, uh, and that it can include um, obesity or excess body fat, lack of exercise, and of course, tobacco use uh, or other exposures. One of the big takeaways from the new report is that colon cancer is the leading cause of cancer-related deaths in men under the age of 50, and it's the second leading cause of cancer deaths in women in that same age uh, group behind breast cancer. Yeah. Why are we seeing this increase in younger people? So just from what you said, cancer, colon cancer does seem to be increasing in younger people. And that's a big reason why the U.S. Preventative Services Task Force came out with recommendations um, lowering the age of first screening for colorectal cancer from age 50 down to age 45 because of this. Um, as to what's driving it, again, um, environmental factors, uh, diet, um, rising rates of obesity um, in the 19, in, in 1970, perhaps. 5% of the American population adults were considered obese, um, and now it's, or sorry, children, and now 20% of children could be considered obese, and for adults, up to 40%. Uh, so those all, um, those factors are all impacting the rising rates of colorectal cancer. So how does obesity impact cancer risk? It's thought that, um, Obesity is tied to metabolic syndrome. It's not just tied to rising rates of cancer. You're seeing um, impacts on cardiovascular risk, uh, and it may be tied to something called metabolic syndrome, um, increased inflammation, um, which can then lead to what we call tumorigenesis or uh, increased rates of cancer. So the good news here is overall cancer-related deaths have been declining during the past 30 years. Yes. That's attributed to increased screenings, better treatment. Yes. Again, let's go back to the benchmark screenings that we need to put on our schedules sure. and at what age. Sure. So just from what you said, the, the bright light is that deaths from cancer uh, have decreased, and we think that is due to better screening um, and better treatments. Um, as far as benchmark screenings, you look at what are the um, highest cancer rates for women. You mentioned breast cancer, so of course, getting your breast cancer screening, which includes clinical breast exams and mammograms. Um, as for colorectal cancer, as I mentioned, the Health Preventative Services Task Force lowered the age of first screening for the general population from 50 to 45. And colorectal cancer screening can encompass anything from fecal occult blood testing, so testing for hidden blood in the stool. There are fecal DNA tests all the way up to more invasive but direct imaging like colonoscopy starting at age 45 for the general population. And then for mammograms, I believe it's age 40 for women? Yes, in general, age 40. Uh, some societies will say age 45 or 50, uh, but age 40 is accepted. And what if you have family history of cancer when it comes to screenings? When should you? If you start? have a family history of cancer, let's say breast or colorectal cancer, especially in a first degree relative, then that of course raises your risk. And the general guidelines are that you should begin screening 10 years before the age of the first degree relative was a diagnosis or by age 40, whichever comes first. All right, Dr. Mika Klein with Texas Oncology, thank you so much for sharing your time and expertise with us tonight. Thank you for having me.